As many of you will know, one of my special areas of interest as it relates to my coaching practice with triage is that of helping people through pain effectively. So whether that be a new injury, a recurring injury, and particularly in the context of resistance training. So people who lift weights, but especially those who lift weights and do something else. So people who lift weights and do jiu-jitsu, lift weights and run, lift weights and box, whatever it happens to be. I like working with those types of people because there's some unique challenges there and there are many lessons to be learned that relate to anyone who is dealing with pain or has a recurring injury or niggle that keeps bothering them when they're lifting in the gym. So what I want to answer in this is the question, why do we get injured in weight training? Okay, because I think that's something that's useful. And there are a number of different reasons, a number of different contributing factors. And to be honest, most of them can be put under the umbrella of inappropriate load management, okay, or inappropriate loading. And that can be broken down into multiple different subcategories. So for example, one of those would be volume. And if we think of volume as being a very gross measure of the overall load exposure, that could be quantified as the total number of sets performed, the total number of reps performed. Uh, the total number of sets is probably the most useful, okay? And particularly those sets that are taken close to failure. And that's where volume begins to intersect with intensity. Because if you're doing a high amount of volume, so let's say you're doing 30 sets for shoulders per week, and you're also taking those to a high intensity, both absolute intensity in terms of how heavy the weight that you're lifting is, um, as a percentage of your one rep max, let's say, and then relative intensity in terms of how close that is to failure. Okay, relative intensity can also be thought of purely in terms of percentage of one rep max. But what I mean there overall is that how heavy the weight is and how heavy that weight is for you and how far you're taking it um, in terms of proximity to failure. And one of the worst things you can do from a prevention of pain perspective is do loads and loads of sets, as many as you can, and take them all to failure, okay? It's just not great practice, okay? That's just the basics. Other things that come into it then would be things such as repetition tempo, okay, and control, technique. These are things that are also important, but again, they fall under that bracket of overall load management. Because for example, if you're using a really fast tempo, like dropping really fast in your squat, okay, you're not controlling it at all. You're dealing with far greater forces when you come to the bottom of that rep than you would be if you were to decelerate the weight, okay? So if you were to come down nice and slowly. And that can be illustrated very simply by taking an object, okay? Let's say I've got this glass. If I've got this glass and I bring it down slowly and rest it on the arm of my chair, that's fine, it's not gonna damage the arm or the chair, no problem, it's not gonna be a big noise, no catastrophe. Do you think I'm gonna drop this <laughs> onto the arm of that chair? No, I'm not, okay? Much like if you put you know, a 10 kilo weight down on your foot nice and slowly, that's fine, you can handle that, but try dropping that 10 kilo weight onto your toe from the height of like two meters. Trust me, I've been there, I've done it, got the comminuted fracture, you don't wanna do that, okay? <laughs> So the velocity at which you move matters. The technique and joint angles, etc., that you achieve, the range of motion, that again all comes into that because it modifies the loading that you're experiencing. So performing, let's say, uh, 50 kilo dumbbell press, which is your six rep max, and going as low as you possibly can and finding any way to get lower despite the fact that your shoulders are already hurting um, when you get towards the bottom and you don't consider yourself to be a very flexible person, that again is one of those things that could contribute to a higher risk of injury because the loading is more novel, it's more um, progressive relative to your current ability, and as a result, the overall, load, the overall load that you're dealing with is increasing, okay? Because 
lifting a 50 kilo dumbbell with arms straight up here is very different to them being like forced all the way back into maximum sh shoulder extension. Okay, so there's some of the variables you want to be thinking about. Now generally people probably overemphasize the importance of the technique component and underemphasize everything else. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see is that people worry far too much about the specific joint angles they're achieving, like, oh, is my back rounding? And not enough about the fact that they're doing 10 sets of deadlifts to failure, okay? You know, it doesn't matter how straight you keep your back in a deadlift. If you're doing far too much volume, far too much intensity, you're working far too hard, your risk of injury is increasing, okay? So this is the thing that I would like you to take away from this. You know, worry a little bit less about being a perfectionist with technique and worry a little bit more about the programming element. Technique is still important because it fits into that domain, as I said, of load management because different techniques, you know, different joint angles, is, a, is it a wide grip bench press uh, with elbows out wide or is it a close grip bench press? You're dealing with different loading there, okay? If you're to break down the biomechanics or the physics of that exercise, it's different. The joint structures involved are dealing with different forces. So technique 100% matters. You can't say it doesn't matter because it modifies the distribution of load and thus, unless you're going to say that the load doesn't matter for injury risk, obviously technique matters. But, the overall load management is what I'd really like you to pay attention to and this is particularly important for those of you who perform multiple different activities. So for example, people who are running and doing weight training, let's say, it's very common for people to adopt a weight training program that someone might be able to tolerate as a bodybuilder, let's say, and then to slap on top of it a load of running. You know, um, they might take on a load of running and how do people then approach their running? They do 5K and they go as fast as they can, 10K as fast as they can. Again, increasing risk of injury because we're, we're pushing that loading far too quickly, okay? This is one of the things that I, I come across most often with new clients who are taking up running. I have to slow them down, slow them down, stop chasing the times, detach the ego, and clearly that's relevant to weight training as well. You'll see this with people who, let's say, they start bench pressing over 100 kilos, they finally break that milestone, and they don't wanna train under 100 kilos at all anymore because they've attached themselves to that level they've attached themselves to that and they're like even if they're doing sets of 12 they probably will just avoid doing sets of 12 because they don't want to do less than 100 kilos and one final thing that I'd like to mention is the role that novelty or staleness can play in increasing risk of injury now we don't have you know much granular evidence on this particularly in weight training but as a whole, what you tend to see is that training that is novel every now and then, so there's variety, so there's variety in the stimuli at, at a given point in time and also across time, that tends to be better from an injury prevention or injury risk reduction perspective. What tends to not work so well is doing the same thing all the time, particularly if that same thing is in accordance with all of those things that we already discussed, such as high volume, high intensity, poor control of your reps, etc. And this is most evident, I guess, when you look at early sports specialization. When you look at children in sports, if they specialize really early, they're at higher risk of um, injuries, burnouts, and other complications down the line versus those who play multiple different sports. And that same thing basically applies to the adult athlete who basically needs to be a generalist before they specialize. Okay, so if you can lay a solid base of um, fitness and strength capability, so you train through lots of different joint range of motions, different exercises, different resistance profiles, etc. That's going to be superior than just doing like three exercises for 60 sets a week, you know? Um, because what you have to realize is that even if you're doing, let's, let's say multiple different squatting variants, like you're doing a split squat, and you're doing a back squat, and you're doing a leg press, they're all squat type exercises. There's slightly different muscle recruitment patterns, slightly different um, distribution of joint forces between those different exercises. And as a result, you're going to have more longevity um, versus simply applying those forces in the exact same way 
every single time. And that's pretty intuitive, I think, you know? If you're, um, you know, going to file something down and you file it from just one side, let's say I'm filing my nail and I'm doing it for 60 seconds, you know, if I do that all from the one side, I'm gonna get to that, the skin much sooner and as a result I'm gonna start bleeding out that finger and it's gonna be a pretty horrible feeling whereas if I do that 60 seconds and it's like 10 seconds there 10 seconds there 10 seconds there 10 seconds there now I've got a well-rounded nail it's nice and short and I haven't dug so deep into any one area of the nail that I've now got a bleeding finger okay so that's the importance of variety and, and not letting your programming become too stale so hopefully that gives you guys some things to think about hopefully some things that you can apply um, within your own training um, uh, people are often very resistant to doing the things that actually do help them reduce their risk of injury and overcome pain and that's one of the reasons why you know I end up working with these people so yeah uh, don't be resistant to it uh, because it will come back to bite you and trust me as someone who does a lot of training without that variation element I'd be injured all the time okay doing multiple different activities I can train eight to ten times per week you know no problem 12 times per week even as long as I'm doing different things if I was doing the same thing for all those sessions God I'd be in pain all the time, okay? Or at least I probably would, okay? Not to, not to scare you. But yeah, that's me, guys. Thanks a minute for watching. I'll speak to you soon.